way you'll stay young forever. I don't really think that's going to work, but it's a nice thought. Thank you. I spent a lot of time over the last 14 years on the trails around Kleinberg. Firstly as a runner, but then in more recent years as a cyclist. The main trail, which is the William Granger Greenway, runs from Boyd Park in the south all the way up to Bindertwine Park, which is just on the outskirts of Kleinberg in the north. Granger Greenway is a really good trail. It's really smooth, uh, crushed gravel, and it's very, very popular with dog walkers, runners, and of course with cyclists. Now, I started cycling in earnest in 2019, and each year I've noticed. Um, subtle improvements even though I'm 57 almost 58 years of age and I know that that trajectory is going to level out and then start to go down at some point but it's kind of neat being you know at a point where most other physical things that you do are kind of like getting weaker and yet you know I've picked up on this new activity and it's still improving slightly so I guess the trick to stay really young is to pick a new sport every three or four years so that you can improve for a couple of years and then when you start to notice it tailing off then pick another new sport and that way you'll stay young forever. I don't really think that's going to work but it's a nice thought. On this particular day I plan to ride on the main trail but then also take a few of the side trails that are a little bit rougher and rootier but my main goal, my main destination was a few kilometres north and west of Kleinberg. Apparently up there in the middle of nowhere there's supposed to be an abandoned reptile zoo and I just can't miss the opportunity of checking out something as cool as that. <laughs> say that Kleinberg is like a real mecca for uh, especially road cyclists in this area. But I was amazed that on this occasion I don't think I saw another single bike. Thank you. 
So this past year I've really enjoyed the small handful of races I've done and it's definitely something that I want to do again next year. Um, and each race I've done I've noticed like a, a subtle improvement, I've noticed my commitment, uh, my engagement with the racing to get getting more and more intense. And so I kind of want to pick that up next year and I would like to focus um, on the races a little bit more and just see if I can improve slightly. Um, judging that's going to be difficult because, you know, if you look at a race like Paris to Ancaster, the time that you do is really dependent on the, on the weather and the conditions of the course. Um, and also if I'm judging myself against other people, well that has to mean that for that to be an accurate judgment, those people have to be at the same level they were when I've raced them previously. So it's just going to be on my own judgment whether I feel that my intensity and the level of effort has been is greater in the future. Now because I do want to improve and because I want to sort of make a, a commitment to my races I am going to be doing some formal training. Um, my first race I'll be doing is likely to be the Paris to Ancaster race which is right at the end of April. So I'm going to be working back 12 weeks from that time and doing a, a more intense block of training 12 weeks leading up to the race. But even before that, I'll be laying down some, some bigger mileages and just laying down a fan foundation. And I also want to look at um, improving my core strength, improving my flexibility. And I also want to focus on reducing my blood pressure in a healthy way. And I know that as a byproduct of that, if I reduce my blood pressure, I'm likely to be um, adopting um, habits that will also help me to reduce my weight. Uh, that can only be helpful, um, especially in a bike race with a few few hills in it. But I don't want to make losing weight to be the priority because, I mean, there's 101,000 ways to lose weight and 75% uh, of those are not very healthy. So I'm going to be focusing on, on reducing blood pressure and we'll see what happens with the weight. I don't know what a reptile zoo is doing out here in the middle of nowhere, especially one that was built probably over a hundred years ago when this area was even more sparsely populated. Maybe it was a research centre or, or perhaps it was the hobby of somebody who lived locally. Perhaps I'll never ever know. But that's what fascinates me about abandoned buildings and it's what fascinates me about local history. Standing in a building like this I can almost feel that that tangible connection to the past. I can almost hear the voices of people who would have occupied that space a hundred years before. As I rode home, I, I started thinking, the architecture was well over a hundred years old, and the idea of there being a reptile zoo way out in the middle of nowhere a hundred years ago just became more and more far-fetched to me. So I had to consider why I initially thought it was a reptile zoo. Well, I'd first seen it on a website uh, all about abandoned buildings. And there, they were calling it a reptile zoo because they had found a sign saying Reptilia Zoo. So it seemed fair enough, but when I looked at this sign in the pictures more closely, I noticed it was lying in the grass. There was a name on the board, so I contacted that person through social media and started asking them all about the building. They were at first very confused because they couldn't recall a building at all. But when I described the location, they okay. said that, yeah, there had been a study in that area that it involved them lying out large sheets of plywood in the fields. Then it kind of made sense. The board had nothing to do with the building. I'd seen this kind of construction before in a dairy barn just off the Oak Ridges Moraine Trail, complete with the troughs for the cows to feed from and the slurry channel running down the middle of the barn. And so the mystery was solved. This isn't a reptile zoo at all. The website, unfortunately, was incorrect. Having said that, this is still a really, really cool ruin and a really interesting building.
I do hope you have enjoyed looking at a relic from the past and hearing my plans for the future. If you have enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon. And that way you're going to be notified every time I put a video out. And I shall see you all on the next ride. Oh, and just as a side note, if you have any suggestions of any interesting, uh, historic, even spooky abandoned buildings that you think I might be interested in, give me a shout in the comments below and I'll, uh, I'll check them out.